The purpose of this video is to show you how locations work in Odoo's version 14. So let's go to the inventory tab here and under configuration locations, we will see that there's one location in this environment and it's called warehouse stock. Warehouse stock is the general location, right? The way to think about locations is in a hierarchical format, meaning there's a top level and then there's many children and those children can have children and those children can have children, so on and so forth to infinitum. So you can layer it in such a way. Let's take a, a live example here. If I go into warehouse stock, I can see the parent location of warehouse stock is just warehouse. And this is the top of the view. If I want to go back to warehouse stock, it's one layer below it. So anything in warehouse will show everything in warehouse stock. Um, but everything in right in warehouse stock might not necessarily show everything in just the normal warehouse. You can see the, the discrepancy. You can see the current stock up here. And there you can see all the goods that meet the criteria. In each location, you can specify, of course, the parent location. You can specify the location type. Um, and all of these different location types have different implications, of course, internal, just a view, a vendor location, a customer location, a loss location, production or transit. Um, you can have it define, is it a scrap or return location? So you'll see here, check this box and it'll uh, allow you to put scrap or damaged goods there. And then obviously return will allow you to return goods to that location. And here you have your removal strategy. So this allows you to specify FIFO, LIFO, or first expiry, first out. In case you're not familiar with these terms, first in, first out means the products that are first to come in are first to go out. Uh, typical removal strategy employed by uh, companies that may be transacting uh, perishables, for example. And then LIFO is uh, last in, first out. So you can uh, then see first expiry, first out, also a perishable strategy. Uh, you can see that would work as well. I just don't have expiration dates uh, configured in this, in this database. But... Okay, focus on locations. So let's go in and create a new location. Let's call this um, bin one. And bin one is part of the warehouse stock location. It's an internal location. Save it. And maybe in bin one, I'll have a uh, shelf one. And there you can see the layers accordingly. Okay, so this is my, my strategy at this time. So let's go in and, uh, and go to a product and let's go component one and let's just quickly update quantity on hand. I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna put these in shelf one, five units. Alrighty, so when I go to locations, if I go to bin one, I will see everything under bin one, which includes component one of five units, right? If I go into warehouse stock at the parent, I can see that um, there are under component one, there's stock in stock and in the bin one, shelf one of five units. And I can, uh, of course, when I click onto the shelf one, I can see that that's the only one there. Um, but if I go and actually, oops, if I go to my product and I take component two and I update the quantity on hand and I put uh, products in just bin one, 55 units, for example, and go back to my locations, I will see when I look in bin one, my 55 units will be there. But if I look in a layer deep, if I look a layer deeper at shelf one, of course, those 55 units are not there. And then from an inventory perspective on my report, I could easily just group by my locations and see a breakdown with all the inventory items per each of these locations here. Or if I ever run a cycle count, which we talked about before, um, and I just click start inventory, I could then group by my locations here as well and see my breakout that I talked about earlier. So that is how locations would work. Um, obviously, when I'm, you know, receiving stock or transferring stock, you can see that there's source destination location specified, such as, right, your um, source would, you could just have as a, oops, I need to specify uh, that I'll receive. And then my, in this case, if you receive, where's the destination you're receiving from? And, or two, I could specify one of my bins, um, right? Receiving is always going to have a default location as the uh, destination is the stock, but um, you could have the source set up here as well on this operation type as the vendor location is, is what it would be uh, associated with. And then as you're receiving in, in your operations here, uh, you can, of course, right, you're going to receive to a destination, which, as I mentioned before, you could specify here. 
uh, to go a level deeper, if we're going to want to do a transfer in uh, receipt in this way, right? Destination, just general stock. But you could also, if you go, uh, if you set the uh, location feature up at the product line level, you could also go beyond assigning it here to warehouse stock, but you could also specify at the line item level individual locations that you want to receive into um, in order to break out. Maybe you want to receive, you know, 10 units into this particular uh, just general stock location, um, but maybe you want to receive five into bin one, five into bin two. Uh, you're able to do that. Um, I just need to activate that feature. But that's the 101 of how locations work. If you have more additional questions on this, uh, please feel free to let me know. Thanks.